Do you really think anatomical planes of movement in yoga is not essential? In fact, it's a waste of time. Then I will recommend you to watch this video till the end. I might change your perception in relation to anatomical planes of movement. As yogis, why do we need to understand the planes of movement? Does it really help? Friends, here in this video, we will talk about the planes of movement and how it will help us in our yoga teaching. Now, Namaste friends, I am Ritesh and today we will cover the three anatomical planes of movement. Understanding how you move your body is the key to getting stronger, staying injury free and feeling more balanced, grounded and happy. And a great tool to help you do all of this is to look at the movement through the lens of three anatomical planes. Once you know how to work with these planes, you will begin to recognize the ones in which you feel most or least comfortable moving your body. Then you may discover your missing whole segment of movement in certain planes. Knowledge that can then inspire you to start moving in the directions where you need to wake up. In doing this, you'll ultimately learn how to wake up in your life too, helping you navigate this world more fully. Here's what you need to know to understand the sagittal, coronal and the transverse plane and why it is so important that you do. The sagittal plane, living in the age of forward bends out of the three planes of movement, that is your sagittal, coronal and transverse. Many of us spend most of our waking lives in the sagittal plane, a plane of movement where flexion and extension takes place. Sitting at a desk, eating a meal at a table, watching TV on a couch, driving a car, riding a bike, running, skiing or rowing checking our smartphones. All of these activities take place in the sagittal plane, day in and day out. From the movement, many of us wake up in the morning to the moment we rest our heads on the pillow to sleep. It's most often the sagittal plane that's explored. Due to the large amount of time spent in the forward flexion, hip flexors and chest muscles become extremely tight, logged, short and therefore very weak, which leads to weak abdominals, upper back and lower back muscles, buttocks and hamstrings. Tension and pain due to an exaggerated lordotic curve of the cervical and exaggerated curve of the thoracic spine are also products of living a habitual life in sagittal plane. We have to remember that gravity is doing its best to attract us the earth. We do not need to accelerate the aging process with living a life limited to the flexion portions of the sagittal plane. The transverse plane, turning and twisting. Out of the other two plane movement, that is your coronal plane, where the adduction and abduction takes place and the transverse plane where the turn and twist takes place. It is the transverse plane we move most often in. Unfortunately, for most humans, this plane of rotation does not get explored evenly both ways. That is on the right side and the left side. From sleeping on a belly with the head always turned to the right or to the left. Turning our head to look over your shoulders while you are driving or biking. Turning towards a phone, computer, a customer continuously while at desk, swimming and only turning your head to one side, surfing or snowboarding, always to one side, reaching for a toilet paper roll that is always to the left or right, twisting to the hit the tennis ball, golf ball or baseball, always on the same side. All this repetitive twisting and turning to one side leads to weak abdominals, that is your obliques and iliac psoas muscles. Also, over time, the spinal vertebral column itself could turn and twist, 
encouraging a distortion in the rib cage as well as compression to the soft tissues and organs inside. In order to reverse these habitual twisting patterns, in addition to switching sides in the above mentioned activities, both yoga and strength training needs to be incorporated in one's daily life. Now, let us talk about the coronal plane that is spreading out. There are not many people who spend a lot of their time in the coronal plane. Speed skaters, horseback riders, kickboxers, martial artists, surfers, dancers and yogis are among those who find themselves spreading out wide repetitively. That's why it is so great that yoga is so popular as a method of cross training. It encourages many seeming healthy and fit people to branch out their repetitive motions in both the sagittal and transverse plane and encourages them to spread out wide in coronal plane using yoga to explore all three planes Ardhuttanasan sagittal plane even in yoga we can find ourselves moving more in one plane of movement than the others classical sun salutation although brilliantly designed to warm up and stretch the body systematically only explore the sagittal plane that is flexion and extension. It is only when we start adding in our warrior tools, triangles, wide leg forward bends that we venture out into the coronal plane of adduction and abduction. Explore the coronal plane in Virabhadrasan 2 that is warrior 2 and if a practice is lacking in a sufficient amount of twist moving into the transverse plane through spinal twists, lunges, revolving triangle and half moon then the detoxifying benefits of that sort of internal massage are sorely missed. It is imperative to give ample time to all three planes of movement when practicing yoga. If your favorite yoga practice emphasizes a lot of movement in one plane of movement, it is then helpful to balance the internal system of your body by adding poses or activities that take you into other planes of movement. For example, if you practice a lot of power yoga, that is many chaturanga dandasanas and or core yoga, many abdominal exercise such as a knee to nose pose may sure make balance your body out with poses that extend the body, work systematically into deeper back bends. Remember, as earlier stated, many of us live our lives in one forward bending shape. We need to make sure we come to the yoga mat and balance our system with back bends. Always remembering to cluster your deeper back bends after much of warming up and then stabilize the spine in a neutral position for many breaths before venturing into later deeper forward bending portion of your practice. Open up and play. I believe that once we understand the three planes of movement, our body is meant to explore itself in the sagittal, coronal and the transverse. We can't help but be more inclined to move, dance and express ourselves in all three of them. It's like waking up to a whole new world. We are compelled to reach out through twisting and turning and even jumping out wide, dancing and playing because natural, even necessary. So go out there, get creative and explore the myriad of ways and shapes your body is capable of moving into. Put the anatomical planes of movement into practice. Want to get comfortable with these anatomical planes? and expand your movement range for teaching skills. So start from here. First step, number one, make a list of your 10 favorite and 10 least favorite poses. Consider which poses you tend to practice at home and which one you avoid. Step number two, determine the primary plane for each of the pose on your list. Step number three, Name the planes in which you seem to be most and least comfortable. Step number four, create a list of poses from your least favorite plane and plan to practice 
these poses several times a week. Are these poses challenging for you? Are they easy? How do you feel? When you practice more from the plane in which you were least comfortable, get curious. Step number five, after a couple of weeks of practice, uh, your least favorite poses go deeper with your line of questioning. What has practicing movements you have been avoiding revealed? Yes, I'm talking about poses and anything else you tend to avoid in life. If you are a teacher, take these same steps. When it's coming to assessing your go-to sequence. Look at the poses you teach often as well as the themes that you choose for your classes. Which plane is over-represented? Which plane is under-represented? Do you tend to teach the plane that is your personal favorite and avoid the one that is your least favorite? Finally, whether you are teaching or simply moving through your own home practice, commit to creating sequences that include poses that highlight your least utilized plane. How do you feel when you practice? Or teach them, how does your body feel after a few weeks of moving in your less utilize plane? Do you feel more embodied? Are your movements more balanced in all the three planes? See if these simple inquiries help you feel more aware and whole. Now friends, it's very important to note that most of the asanas that we practice is always in the sagittal plane. And most of the time what you are doing is flexions. So whenever you are doing anything as flexions, what is happening? Your hip flexors, that is your iliac and psoas, your quads, your core muscles, your uh, pectoralis major and minor, your serratus, all is getting tight. In return, what's happening to your extensors? They all are getting weak and overstretched. Now, if every time you do all the poses where you're always trying to contract, you need to balance it out by doing extensions and trying to hold extension so balancing your flexors and extensors flexor group of muscles extensor group of muscles and most of the time the problem is there because in the sagittal plane the only movement that we are doing is flexing whether it's a chair pose forward bend downward facing dog all the poses are into flexions what about extensions very rarely someone focuses on extension. Let us talk about the laterals or the coronal plane, also known as the frontal plane. That means any movement that is going to the sides, right? What I am focusing on is the obliques, right? So try to focus on a triangle pose or a Pashvakonasana, a side angle pose, anything, a Ardha Chandrasana or Virabhadrasana too. Friends, all these poses on the lateral side in the frontal or the coronal plane will help you to activate your obliques, the side muscles. Then you also need to focus on the twistings like uh, Paravirta Sukhasana that are seated, twisted, anything. Uh, uh, Paravirta Trikonasana that is a twisted triangle. So friends, the whole idea behind this plane of movement is try to use all the planes. Don't get stuck with only one plane that is sagittal. And in sagittal, only the flexors. And that is the reason it is good to have a multi-planar training. And that's the reason I want you to utilize all the three planes of movement together. Right? You can go for a reverse walk, reverse jog. <clears throat> or your vinyasa flow should be such that you uh, inculcate all the three planes of movement that you can. So friends, hope you could get some idea about these planes of movement and how you would utilize these planes of movement in your yoga practices. That's it with the planes of movement. Take care. Keep smiling. Namaste.